Today, we start on the floor platform. I'm really hoping we can get this cranked out this weekend. We have two days until the Amish guys get here and they're hoping to start above the floor. So it's just gonna be me and today it's gonna be Shane helping to both move all this lumber behind me. So there's 60 something sheets of uh, three quarter inch Chung and Groove OSB plus all of our eye joists. I'm borrowing a big flatbed truck from the orchard I used to work at. So shout out Baron, thank you for letting me borrow that. And that will help us move the 28 foot long eye joists we have. We started out loading these huge 18 inch by 20 foot long LVLs. These make up the roof ridge beam and they're not actually as heavy as they look. These eye joists are the single most expensive lumber component in our whole frame. They're about $5 a linear foot and with all that added up, I think I spent just under $6,000 on just eye joists. All loaded up, ready to go. What do you think, Shane? Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, mom. Things shifted just a little bit, but overall, I don't think we lost anything. That's always good. And as another surprise, we got a lift delivered a little bit early, so we're gonna be able to use that to unload. Thank goodness. All right, so I didn't show it on camera yesterday, but my buddy Matt came over, helped me put up some temporary scaffolding, which is gonna be huge for laying these joists out. And Shane is here today, helping with putting our actual floor system in. So we're gonna be putting all the eye joists in, hopefully some LVLs too. Goal is to have as much of it up and braced as we can so that maybe tomorrow we can get to some sheeting. That's gonna be wishful thinking though, we'll see. How you doing, Shane? Good, good. Well, after some figuring out, we have finally finished the layout on the first middle wall there. Shane's coming to replicate the same thing on the front. Thank goodness we have our uh, laptop architect station here. It's the Benefit of, and the curse really, of designing your own house is you can change things on the fly and you got the software to figure out what measurements you don't have. This is my first time using a telehandler, so how hard can it be? Okay, none of the switches are labeled, so we are off to a good start. Uh, these are labeled, so that helps. Turns out they designed these machines for nearly anyone to be able to operate, so even with zero prior experience, I was able to pick up on it within about a minute or so. Here I was talking to Shane about the steering modes. There's three modes for the machine. It'll do four wheel steer in which you can make the tightest turns, regular car steering where the back wheels are straight but the front wheels turn, and then crab steering where both the back and front wheels turn the same direction so you can shift the machine left or right. These turned out to be really handy when you're maneuvering and trying to make just minor adjustments. The first step to installing these eye joists is actually putting in this engineered rim board. It's an inch and an eighth thick by 14 inches deep, which is the same depth as the eye joist. It's made specifically for this application and basically it goes around the full perimeter of the floor platform, hence the term rim board. It's initially installed with toenails at six inches on center right at the edge of the floor platform into the top plate. This gives us a backstop, so to speak, for the eye joists when we put them in place so that we can cut them to length accurately. Then we started laying out all the eye joists. We had previously marked out where each one needs to go with a line and an X at 16 inches on center. We butted one end against the rim board, then snapped the chalk line over the center of the bearing wall. That gave us a cut line for the length of each one. I made this eye joist cutting jig with a couple scraps of sheeting. It fits within the eye joist and allows me to run my saw flat over the joist and make nice clean cuts. My DeWalt 60 volt framing saw had just enough cut depth to do the whole joist at once. I did compensate just a little bit because these are in the flat position so when they get straightened out they will grow just about a quarter inch. Cutting the joist to length was pretty straightforward but repetitive. It's just clamping the guide in place where my blue chalk line is then running the saw along it for all 30 joists. 
Under each of the four dormer sidewalls, I did decide to double up the joist just for a little bit of extra strength there. Boise Cascade, who makes these eye joists, recommends filling a doubled up joist with two by dimensional material plus a sheet of half inch plywood. So that's what we did down on the sawhorses. However, this made an extremely heavy joist, which thank goodness we had the lift for getting up into place. It was way too heavy to have done by hand. But the telehandler made short work of reaching up and over and getting these big beams where they needed to go. Then all we had to do was shimmy them off the edge of the forks and carefully set them down on the top of the wall, making sure that they don't fall. The temporary scaffolding that we had built the day prior was crucial for putting these joists in. It allowed us to walk the full length of both of the bearing walls without getting in the way of the joists. Doing this off ladders or traditional rolling scaffold would have been really cumbersome. After everything was cut to length, we started rolling them upright. I used a level to make sure they were plumb, and then to fasten them to the rim board, each joist gets one single nail into the end of the flange through the rim board. Then a single nail goes down through the bottom flange into the top plate on each side. This engineered lumber has a lot of rules about where you can and can't place nails, minimum distances from edges, that sort of thing, so if you're ever putting these in, just make sure you read the instructions. Here you can see the doubled up joist standing upright. The one furthest to the right is actually a doubled LVL. That forms the inside of the stairwell and it was recommended by the engineer we work with to use LVL there. The joist on the back side only had to be about 13 foot and change long, so I ordered 28 footers and just had planned to cut them in half. I figured the easiest way to do this would be to band them all together and do it all at one shot with a chainsaw. Once they are rough cut, we could easily hand them up there and cut them to the precise length with my circular saw. I didn't film it, but we got the back half in place later that day, and I rounded it out by doing just a little short joist around the stair opening. The next morning, the Amish crew showed up, and they helped me pick up where I left off, basically finishing out the floor platform. I just paid them hourly for this work, and it was well worth it. They used the scrap offcuts to put in some mid-span blocking. Even though this wasn't in my plans, I decided it would be a good use of the waist, and it helps just stiffen the floor a little bit on our front span, which is 22 foot. The mid-span blocking got glued and screwed using some 2x4 scraps. That was a detail per Boise Cascade. At the bearing wall we had solid blocking in between the joists as well to keep them from turning over. For this blocking we used a combination of solid rim board and some of the eye joist offcuts. They also helped with putting the sheeting down and that was well worth it. I'm really glad I didn't have to muscle around any of these 3 quarter inch tongue and groove sheets. I never did do the old slide the level across the floor joist trick to make sure they're nice and flat, but overall this thing did look dead flat. I sighted down it a few times and I'm really happy with how it turned out. These eye joists are nice and straight and consistent, very easy to work with, and I'm really satisfied with the product. For a 22 foot span in that front garage, I really had to use something engineered. Dimensional lumber would have left me with needing another beam and a set of posts in between. So it was either eye joists or floor trusses, floor trusses being even more expensive, and I decided to go with the eye joists. I had the guys use Great Stuff Pro foaming subfloor adhesive to glue the sheets down, and they got nailed at 4-8 spacing just like the wall sheathing was. That was using just 2 inch long nails though because the eye joist flange is not super deep. I know a lot of people recommend screwing down subfloors. I figured I would do this just in areas that I found squeaks. I didn't think the extra time or investment was really worth it at this point, especially because this is just basically our, our temporary living situation for the next few years. Next week we'll be picking back up where we left off on the second floor framing. These guys did a lot of work in a short amount of time. If you got some value from this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. It helps us out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And we really appreciate you watching. Thanks again and until next time.